had the opportunity to spend some time reviewing ongoing uh, large phase three multicenter randomized radiopharmaceutical trials in prostate cancer. And um, the big picture is uh, what's going on in the field is we're seeing a lot of expansion of uh, lutetium PSMA agents into different settings. So they were initially approved for post-chemotherapy MCRPC um, through the VISION trial. But now what we've seen um, is testing in earlier and earlier uh, lines in prostate cancer. So we now have pretty mature trials in the pre-chemotherapy MCRPC space, including PSMA4, Eclipse, Splash, and then there's a new one there, which is uh, Prostact Global. And then we're also seeing now in metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer um, with the PSMA addition, Stampede 2, and Peace 6 studies, and then even earlier on in the oligometastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer setting, now with the PSMA DC. Um, so I can, you know, kind of walk through a couple of these trials. Um, so I think the, oh, and then the other thing that's going on is there's now, we're starting to see the actinium and alpha emitters emerge in these later, later center trials. So we have the alpha break and PSMA action studies, which are now being um, in, uh, have new phase two slash three trials. So they're currently in the phase two stage with plan to initiate a registration style uh, trial afterwards. And that's alpha break and PSMA action. Um, so I thought the, the PSMA DC is an interesting study. Um, this is looking at, uh, it's called, it, DC is short for delay castration. So the idea here is in patients with oligometastatic prostate cancer who are going to undergo metastasis directed radiotherapy um, with external beam radiation therapy that you might delay time to progression by adding on lutetium uh, PSMA. So I think this is an interesting study. It's it's opened very recently. Uh, it looks like it's been less than a year since um, March of 2024. Um, and they're randomizing patients to SBRT alone versus SBRT plus four cycles of lutetium PSMA 617. The primary endpoint here is metastasis-free survival on conventional imaging. So really here looking at like the, a very early stage of the disease. Um, and we'll see if it, you know, can delay time um, can augment the kind of metastasis directed therapy stage and uh, donate, delay um, the need for androgen de deprivation therapy. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Uh, in metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer, we have multiple large trials ongoing. Um, the most mature of these is the PSMA addition study. Um, so this is um, patients with metastatic prostate cancer, at least one positive soft tissue or bone, distant metastatic lesion that's positive on PSMA PET. And these patients are treatment naive or have minimal prior ADT. So this was a prospective um, phase three, one-to-one -one randomized study comparing lutetium PSMA for the standard six times six. So six, uh, six cycles for six weeks, plus standard of care to standard of care alone. And the standard of care here is uh, androgen receptor pathway inhibitor plus ADT. And um, this study has not really reported out yet, but at least uh, Novartis did issue a press release that the, this study had met its primary endpoint showing um, significant and clinically meaningful benefit um, for Pluvicto plus hormone therapy versus hormone therapy alone. Um, so we'll see that, of course, we haven't seen the data yet. So we'll, we'll have to hold uh, our real judgment here, but obviously this sounds like it's going to be a positive trial and you know potentially a practice changing trial. Um, Along these lines, these are earlier stage studies, but we're now seeing multi-center trials in the UK, which is Stampede 2, um, where they're looking at um, metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer, lutetium PSMA plus androgen deprivation therapy, and then a P6 poor responders trial where they're adding on lutetium PSMA 617 in patients who don't have a complete um, PSA response after initiation of androgen deprivation therapy for hormone-sensitive prostate cancer. Um, so this is an interesting space. It seems like um, PSMA radio ligand therapy is very active uh, in this patient group, and we'll um, we'll ha just have to wait until these uh, these data mature before we see if this becomes part of our standard of care. In um, in the pre chemotherapy MCRPC setting, um, these trials are more mature and um, have significantly reported out. Uh, this is a nice slide I got from uh, Jeremy Calais kind of comparing the PSMA4 splash and eclipse studies. Um, these are all pre-chemotherapy MCRPC patients who are administered lutetium PSMA. 
the PSMA4 uses the PSMA617 agent, and Splash and Eclipse used PSMA INT. Um, and uh, Eclipse has uh, re released a pre press release, but the full data isn't out yet. Uh, PSMA4, um, there's uh, data analysis still ongoing, but the third data cutoff was presented or published in Lancet last year. And they saw here a uh, improvement in terms of uh, radiographic uh, progression-free survival um, for Lutetia and PSMA617 versus ARPA change um, with essentially similar overall survival. So this, um, as you know, many people will probably recognize already led to FDA approval for Lutetia and PSMA 617 on or very recently earlier this year for MCRPC patients who are treated with ARPI therapy and are considered appropriate to delay tax and age chemotherapy. These other trials um, are, are ongoing. Splash uh, was uh, in the same same session I spoke in. Oliver Sartor did a nice job uh, explaining these results as well. Also seems to have some um, clinical activity as well. And another one, which is kind of newer in the game, which is the Prostact Global Study. This uses a different type of radiopharmaceutical therapy where this is an antibody. So the other ones are low molecular weight, small molecule type uh, radio ligands. This is where you take a full length antibody, um, immunoglobulin um, called Rosopatamab tetraxin, which is, they call it TLX591. It was formerly known as J591. So here they're labeling this full antibody with Lutetium-177, and then they've just recently uh, initiated this multicenter um, study. They were presenting some safety and dosimetry data at the meeting as well, but this is, you know, potentially also an exciting agent, and we'll, we'll see how the data looks. Um, and then the, the alphas uh, now starting to enter into the game here in the later stage trials. A lot of excitement around these agents. They appear to, broadly speaking, the trend seems to be that they're much more active they seem to have overall reduced hematologic toxicity, but seem to have increased toxicity in other areas, most notably in the salivary glands. So that's the, kind of the big picture is what we've seen from the data so far, but we'll see more in these multi-center and registration studies. So Alpha Break is um, from, from Fusion Pharma using the FPI-2265 or Actinium PSMA INT agent. The phase two has initiated here. They're looking at different dosing schemes that are playing a role into phase three registration study. And then uh, PSMA Action from Novartis looking at uh, AAA 817 or Actinium PSMA 617. And so they're in this phase two um, uh, stage now, um, and they're gonna plan on to roll into their phase three subsequently. So a lot of interesting new things going on in that space as well. Um, we'll see how it turns out. I mean, these have only really been investigated in uh, retrospective um, and, you know, smaller um, studies without uh, control arms. So we'll see how it how it pans out in the long run. But certainly, you know, huge amount of excitement in the field around the alpha emitters as well. So that's really kind of the main, um, main summary of my presentation there. And I think, you know, the big picture here is that what, we're, what we've seen is in addition to FDA approval, Lutetium PSMA 617 for pre and post chemotherapy metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer there are PSMA radiopharmaceutical therapies now being evaluated in various other registration studies will, and will likely find increased use in the future. Um, I'm not, I don't hold a leadership role in any of these studies, but, you know, I really hope that these investigators are successful um, because I think this is a good, uh, these are good drugs um, and they really help uh, patients with prostate cancer.